You're listening to the Effective Statistician Podcast, a weekly podcast with Alexander Schacht and Benjamin Pieske designed to help you reach your potential, lead great science and serve patients without becoming overwhelmed by work. This is episode number 74, why I started the Effective Statistician and what you can learn from it. <music> We are launching the Effective Statistician Leadership Program again. This program is designed for statisticians in the health sector and it is designed to strengthen your leadership skills so you can maximize your impact at work. And this is not just for supervisors, this is for every statistician. It's a mixture of webinars, podcasts, and moderated small group discussions where you actually get a lot of feedback and direct interaction with the uh, trainers of this program, so especially myself, and with the other students in the program. We have students from pharma, zero, academia, from all levels of different experiences, and all of them benefit. It's really, really great to see the growth of the students in the program. So, take action, join this program and get into the driver's seat of your career. Um, this podcast is created in association with PSI, a global member organization dedicated to leading and promoting best practice and industry initiatives. Join PSI today to further develop your statistical capabilities with access to the video-on-demand content library, free registration to all PSI webinars, and much, much more. There's a reduced rate available for just £20 for non-high-income countries, and it's also just £95 for high-income countries, and you'll get a lot of value there. Visit the PSI website at psiweb.org to learn more about PSI activities and become a PSI member today. So this is one of the rare solo episodes that I'm doing. I did one last year um, as a summer episode and I think a lot of the learnings from there you can still apply today. Um, and today it's a solo episode because it's a very personal episode of myself and why I started the Effective Statistician. But it will also go pretty deep into what is in there for you. So I'm pretty sure you can learn a lot along the way of, of the story. It will also give you a little bit of the background of the Effective Statistician how it all started and uh, what the story behind it is, what my learnings were along the way, um, as well as what I actually struggled with. It all started really um, when I became a new supervisor and I had my first direct reports and I thought I really needed to learn much more about supervisory skills. Well, if you have limited time to learn... I couldn't read a lot of books because that was kind of um, clashed with my time that I had with, you know, on the PC and these kind of things. And I also had a pretty busy family life at that time already. So I needed some things that I could do while I was commuting to work. And podcasts were there a really, really nice uh, medium. And I wasn't listening to podcasts before. Uh, a lot. So that was a new way of learning for me. The nice thing about it was that I found so many really, really helpful uh, podcasts out there. And while I was listening to a couple of different podcasts about supervisory skills and leadership and more and more, I learned about other podcasts about podcasts. That kind of planted the, this thought in my head that I could start with my podcast someday as well. So I think the, the lesson here is really to stay curious and learn all the time. And there's, sometimes there's a lot of kind of learnings along the way that maybe we didn't anticipate and that 
opens new opportunities and, and new doors for us. I think the other couple of things is there were a couple of other things that all came together at the time. So I was having lots of discussions with Benjamin about all kind of different work and stats related topics. And we had these kind of discussions on a more or less ongoing basis, more ad hoc, um, not in any kind of structured form, but they were really, really nice. And we both enjoyed them all the time. Um, and I, we have talked about that in the first episode, actually. And uh, if you haven't listened to that, maybe that's something uh, to go back and, and get a little bit of um, an intro of, of the two of us as well as how that started there. But um, we thought then maybe we can share these kind of learnings with a wider community. Also at the same time, I was finding myself repeating things at work. So I was um, talking to my staff and to my team and I was thinking, well, if they struggle with it, probably lots of people struggle with it, not just in my team. And why should just my team um, get it? And, you know, if I do it once, maybe I can, you know, do it in a way that um, they can listen to it again and again and again. And um, so that there's some kind of reservoir of, of knowledge that they can um, tap into. Also, at the same time, I was working with PSI a lot. So I was working on the scientific committee. I was helping with um, the benefit risk uh, special interest group. And we have set up a blog there. And I kind of realized that maybe blog and writing is not the right medium for me. And so I thought it would also be really, really helpful for PSI to have a a podcast that helps the overall community. All these kind of different things came together, but I think what it was missing was some kind of trigger. And that trigger came late in 2017 when I was uh, hearing about an offer where in a one day workshop all around the podcast would be set up and there would be some help with it. And so I took that offer, spent a couple of hours during that day to set up kind of all the yeah, backbone, the logistical backbone of, of the of the podcast. Maybe it sometimes needs some outside push or some kind of window of opportunity or some, you know, remark from someone to actually get going. But then it's, of course, also taking the leap and getting started. And when I had that set up, that kind of removed the last barrier for really get going with, with the podcast. Now, why am I actually passionate about it? I think it's always important to understand your why. Uh, Simon Sinek talks a lot about it, but I think it is really important for everybody. And if you understand your why, you really have a good, solid foundation and you can go back to it and that helps you get going in, in the long run. So I think it helps you to stay on track and also it helps you to get back on track but of course you need to have it kind of in the forefront of your mind and think about it um, quite a lot so that it becomes your your north star your you know your things that you're heading for the things that you is, is guiding you i'm really passionate about the effective statistician because i think we need strong statisticians in the health sector to help make good decisions around um, health, about therapies, about all these kind of different things. For me personally, I had the experience that um, with my three little kids, I very often lacked this evidence. I best I had some anecdotal evidence and, well, 
as statisticians, we all know how good we can trust these kind of anecdotal evidences. And that really kind of made me very uncomfortable with lots of decisions around uh, therapies for, for my uh, kids and personally what to do with, with things. That's really my, my why. And um, I think we as statisticians need to step up in this whole health environment and influence decisions in such a way that they're sound, that they're data-driven, um, that there's clear clarity about where the uncertainty is, where the evidence is, where the strengths of the data are, where the limitations of the data are. Only we as statisticians can really do that. And our logical thinking has a lot here that we can bring to the table to make better decisions. I also, one of these big things in there is, of course, leadership. And that's why I started the leadership program. And, well, the leadership program is um, coming up again um, later this year. So if you're interested in uh, building your leadership skills, then just go to the effective statistician slash course and you can find out about uh, the leadership program there. I started that for the same reasons why I started the podcast. Yeah, I wanted really to see others grow. And that is also one of the, it connects with the other why's that I have, you know, the, the helping statisticians overall in this uh, industry. And leadership is one of the things that is a big level for all the other things. And seeing how people get success at work through my day job and seeing people grow there is, is fantastic. And it's also really, really nice to see the growth of the uh, students in the leadership program. For example, um, seeing how they now can speak with your senior management on a completely different level because they have invested in building a good foundation of their business knowledge or how they can build more stronger relationships at work because they understand why that is important and how to do it. Or this example of a statistician that reached out due to the um, triggers in the course and found out that a colleague was making lots of lots of decisions just by looking at raw data listings with thousands of data points for a very, very long time and then making some kind of gut-feeling, eyeballing decisions on um, those escalations and how that statistician made these um, data into something that is more easy to understand, uh, some visualizations, and turned this decision-making process that took a day and was not very good evidence-based into something that only takes a couple of minutes and has where the decision-maker has a solid understanding of the data. And so this, these are exactly the examples that really um, drive me for, for continuing with, with this. I hope through this program, all of the participants become students of leadership. And I think that is a, also general learning here. Becoming a student of leadership is a never-ending story. And I have learned so much along the line, uh, along the way with um, podcast interviews, preparing for the podcast, uh, preparing for the leadership program, having discussions with all the different students in the leadership program. Uh, the small group discussions we have in there are always very, very inspiring because we help each other to get a deeper understanding of what leadership for us means and also how we can set that up in our day-to-day -day work. So how we can translate what we learn on a theoretical basis into something actionable in day-to-day in -day work. Of course, as a teacher, you learn a lot as well, which is another maybe a nice, nice learning. As a, If you teach others, you get a lot back there as well. So that's really nice. One other thing where that all started is 
with the um, with an initiative that was started maybe about 10 years ago at Lilly, uh, where there was a rollout of a new functional strategy. And um, that has been presented at uh, different conferences and, and meetings. One of these being a recent uh, FSPY leaders meeting where I um, was uh, giving a half-day workshop to lots of uh, statistical supervisors within the pharmaceutical industry. The leadership strategy there was based on four pillars. Leadership, innovation, knowledge and excellence. Also known as the like strategy. Just bringing leadership, innovation, knowledge and excellence together. It was created as a functional strategy. But for me, it's also a very personal strategy for doing my job as a statistician. All these different things really come together. So, so under leadership, there's two bigger things. One is my personal leadership, so leading myself, and then leading others, inspiring others, inspiring others to take action and not telling each others, uh, uh, others especially not in my team, but also, of course, transfunctionally, you can't just tell people what to do, but help them understand what are the right decisions to make and, and driving them into uh, the right direction. Innovation for me has basically two different uh, parts. One is making processes better, making workflows better. And the other thing is bringing innovative statistical things into the organization. And that doesn't always mean to create a new statistical approach, but taking what's out there and bringing it into the organization. Maybe, you know, there's a new statistical test that has never been applied in your organization and that really would help to overcome some of the existing use. Or maybe there's a new design feature, an overall new design that you can use. Or maybe there's a better way to visualize your data. So there's lots of different innovative things that is that would help the business to thrive a lot. So bring that in. The third part is the knowledge part of this overall strategy. And for me, this is seeing the bigger picture, understanding what the business really needs, understanding what the end customer needs, what the payers need, what the regulators need, what the patients need, what the physicians that are actually making the treatment decisions need, but also what our internal partners that we work with what are their needs? The other part that is big in this is the therapeutic area knowledge. So having a deep insight into what are the treatment options out there? What are the pros and cons of these treatment options? What are the guidelines that are out there? What are, what are the ways that we measure the progress of the disease? Or uh, what are common adverse events? What are the patient needs? What is the patient journey? These kind of things are really, really important because only if you understand them, you can actually apply the innovations in, in a good way. Only then you know where an innovation really is an innovation because it delivers additional value. It's not just something new, but it actually is something new that adds value. The last part is excellence. And excellence is kind of the foundation of everything. If you can't get things done in an effective way with quality, then you can't get, well, then all these other things really fall apart uh, because then nothing in your, of your innovation initiatives will actually go forward. You'll have no way to apply the knowledge that you have gained and you'll never build anything of trust to actually lead something. So, that is really important. And for me, that has a lot to do with developing habits, um, following certain um, quality principles. This is really important. And if you look at these kind of four different parts, the leadership, the innovation, the knowledge and the excellence, all these four parts really go together. They work synergistically. They help each other. And if one falls apart, 
all the rest falls apart as well. So think a little bit about it, how leadership, innovation, knowledge and excellence, how all these four things actually go together, how they work synergistically and help each other. Actually, if you have a look at the homepage, theeffectivestatistician.com, you'll see that all the episodes of this podcast are categorized according to these four categories. Of course, there's episodes that not just um, fall within one category, but a couple of uh, them. But if you're interested in a specific category, you can find all the episodes related uh, to this uh, category. Now, I want to also share a couple of different things that I struggled with. One of the things that I struggled with is vulnerability, showing that not everything is perfect here and that I'm learning along the lines as well. It's, you know, we are a little bit on a journey here together. As you're listening to this podcast, you learn a lot. I'm learning a lot. There are mistakes happening. There are failures happening. There are setbacks. I'm trying to kind of set up processes that these are, of course, minimized, but sometimes there's a wrong episode loaded into the uh, podcast player or something like this. Well, these things happen. And I think I had also some problems with sharing where I'm maybe not that knowledgeable, where I have done not that perfect. I, I think the episode where I had this deep work experiment. If you go back into the, your podcast player and, and search for, for that, that was, I think, one of the big exceptions where I shared much more about kind of how I struggle with being effective over a day as well. So I think that that was a really, really nice one. The other thing, of course, is aligning these work activities with my family commitments, with my overall work commitments, with my PSI commitments. Making sure everything goes together is really important. However, I also see a lot of synergistic things there. So, so I learn in one area that I can apply to each other, uh, to another area. I get a lot of energy from uh, from this podcast, and I get a lot of um, good feedback for this podcast. And I hope you can give me a little bit of of this feedback as well, uh, a little bit more to to relate to this later. Um, what's really awesome is that. We have now about 40,000 downloads, so um, meaning that episodes that get downloaded cumulatively across all episodes. And we are now at about 600 to 700 listeners per week. And these numbers are growing, which is really, really awesome. And it shows me that there's value in these different episodes and you love them as much as I do. And um, what's also great is um, since a couple of weeks now, I have uh, some help with the production of the show, and that helps to decrease the overall time commitment as well for, for the podcast, and I can more concentrate on the content, get the production more streamlined and and. Um, yeah, I have some really, really nice help there. So with that, I really would like to ask you to help me. I want to make this podcast as good as possible for you, to deliver as much value as possible for you, and therefore I need your help. If you could go just to the homepage of The Effective Statistician, go to this episode and just then add some comments there. What do you like about the podcast? What do you don't like about the podcast? What are suggestions for improvement, for suggestions for, for change? But also, what should I continue to, to do? So please leave some comments there. I'll for sure read all of them and I will uh, reply to all of them. And if you see there's a comment there that you agree with, you know, like it and and uh, add another call, comment there. That would be really, really awesome. So thanks so much for listening to this episode and speak to you next week again. So 
this show was created in association with PSI. Please visit theeffectivestatistician.com to find the show notes and there you can also leave your comments and learn more about our podcast to boost your career as a statistician. Also, don't forget to check out the homepage of the Effective Statistician Leadership Program at theeffectivestatistician.com slash course. So, reach your potential, lead great science and serve patients. Just be an effective statistician.